Good morning. This is Karma Spence of the Author Switch, and I'm here with another episode of Coffee with Karma. Today, by the way, I am drinking Dunkin' Donuts pumpkin spice, and of the pumpkin spice flavored coffees, it is the best. Um, I've been talking about that over on my Karma's Cookery uh, Facebook page, and I will drop links to those two videos where I reviewed the various coffees, or actually it might be three videos, where I reviewed the three co pumpkin spice coffees in the notes, just in case you're interested. I know you're here for business, so let's get down to business, right? Today, I want to talk about something that some people are all over, and some people are like, oh, no, 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 no. And that is the book outline. And like I said in the notes to this, I think they're there, <laughs> or, or there. <laughs> I think they're there. Anyway, you wouldn't build a house without a blueprint. So why write a book without an outline? Now, you know I'm, if you've been following me, you know I'm all about the outline. I have an entire program that helps you build an outline that help practically writes the book for you. And I know that there are people out there who are all over the idea of the outline. In fact, um, I've been getting emails every day lately from one of the people I follow, Daniel Hall, who's awesome. Check out his content. Um, he apparently is now talking about outlining your book so that you can successfully complete NaNoWriMo, which of course is right around the corner. And in case you don't know what NaNoWriMo, right, it's a uh, national write a book in a month. <laughs> so you write, basically write a novel in a month. I don't know anyone who's actually accomplished that, but I'm sure it can be done if you prepare, and that's what Daniel's helping his audience do right now. Anyway, so here's my theory of outlining. There are two kinds of writers, and I've talked about this. I'll drop a link to the video where I talked about this, and there's a post too that goes into it. There's, there's turtle writer, and there's rabbit writer. Rabbit writer doesn't use outlines. Rabbit writer just goes with the flow, woo, and often ends up going down writing rabbit holes. Turtle writer plots out his course, writes his outline, and completes and wins the race. Hello. And what I also like to talk about is we have both turtle and rabbit in us. Both those writers coexist, and the thing is, when they work together, <gasps> beauty, because turtle sets the course, writes the outline, rabbit takes that outline and runs with it. So here are, and the reason I keep working because I've got my notes, because I want to make sure I cover these things. Now your outline is what helps you understand and stay the course so that you know where you're beginning, where you're going to end, and how you intend to get there. It can be as simple as a table of contents. So how do you create this blueprint for your book? Step one, define your big idea so that you know exactly where you want to start and where you want to end up. And where you want to end up is even more important because that's how you plot. You can either start where you're beginning and plot your way to the end, which could get a little messy because you might lose that end, or you start with your end and you reverse engineer your way to the beginning, which is probably a smarter way to go. Because you want to understand what your primary takeaway of your book is that you want your readers to have so that you can put every only put things in your book that help lead them to that final aha, that final takeaway, that final piece of wisdom. And everything else is superfluous goes into another book, not this book. So now that you've got your big idea, you break it down. You break it down into small bits. So let's say the end in mind is please write an outline, embrace your turtle, and let rabbit live free within your outline, right? That's my big takeaway. So how do I get there? Well, I tell you about your big idea. I tell you to break it down. I tell you about turtle and rabbit. Maybe not in that order, but 
that's the first thing you say. So you've got your big idea where you want to end up. What are the little things? What are the points that will lead someone to that big idea? And then organize those thoughts into a logical table of contents, your chapters. And then what you can do, you can either run with it there or you can take each chapter and write three to five bullet points per chapter of what you want to include in that chapter. So each chapter becomes almost like a little mini book doing the same process. And if you do that, then the outline practically writes itself because then all you have to do is flesh out each bullet point. Pretty soon you've got a full fledged chapter and you do that enough times, you've got a full fledged book. And remember also, your book doesn't have to be a tome. It doesn't have to be 200 pages or plus. That's if you're writing a traditional big book that you want to have like on the New York Times bestseller or something. But if you're writing a client attractive book, client attracting book, it only needs to be like 75 to 100 pages. And that's only if you want it to eventually be a physical book. If you only want it to be an ebook, it can be 10 pages. Because they do have Kindle short reads, which are really short reads, which are not 200 pages, not 100 pages. So really think about what it is you're trying to accomplish with your book so that you write the right book and use the right idea. That is Coffee with Karma for today. I will see you next week. I haven't planned out the contents for Monday through Friday yet, but I'm sure they will be as riveting or more than today. This is Karma Spence saying ciao for now.